Um, so I want to welcome you here, and uh, I will thank him when he gets here, but thank Dr. Pan and his staff uh, for their leadership around uh, this uh, very important issue that we're here to talk about today. Um, I want to just take a couple of minutes and talk about uh, uh, where kids in California with special needs are and why our foundation is interested in, in, in this uh, set of work. Um, I've been a, a pediatrician, it's hard to believe for me, for more than 30 years. And there has been a transformation in healthcare during my lifetime. Uh, in, in many ways, there has never been a better, child, a, better, a better time to be a child with a special healthcare need. Um, it's remarkable to think that when I was a resident, it was almost unheard of to see an adolescent with cystic fibrosis because the life expectancy in 1979, 1980 was 12 years. Um, it's hard to believe that when I trained as a resident, the majority of children with the most common form of childhood cancer did not achieve a sustainable remission. It's remarkable to think that when I trained as a resident, um, the um, majority of children born at 1,200 grams did not survive. That's in my lifetime. And it's also remarkable to think that the thing that filled up the children's hospital when I trained um, in, in the early 1980s, uh, other than asthma, the most common reason to be admitted to a children's hospital in 1980 was infections with a bacteria called Haemophilus influenza. And most of our residents today have never seen it. Um, so there has been an incredible transformation in healthcare uh, because today we don't see Haemophilus influenza. We are this year going to probably see the tipping point where there are more adults than children with cystic fibrosis. Um, we are reaching a point where the majority of children born at 1,000 grams are surviving and living normal lives. And we're reaching a point where the most common form of childhood cancer is almost always curable. So it's been a remarkable transformation. Uh, and, and that's really happened largely because of spectacular clinicians, pediatricians, pediatric special, uh, subspecialists, spectacular researchers who've provided these cures, spectacular centers of excellence uh, uh, at our uh, state's children's hospitals. And we're particularly fortunate in California to have a very strong network of pediatricians, pediatric subspecialists, and children's hospitals that have made these miracles happen. That said, children and families with special health care needs are still struggling. Um, and if you look at the broader way that these kids are faring in the system of care, not the management of their particular condition, but their system of care, they're not doing particularly well. Uh, and in a little bit, Christy Bethel will spend some time talking about how kids in California are doing. Um, it, it's in some ways um, a, a national embarrassment that despite the fact that we've made all of these technical and medical advances in the care of children, that as a nation, we really haven't evolved a delivery system that recognizes the transformation from a delivery system that was focused on treating kids with Haemophilus influenza disease and one that should be focused on treating kids who are now surviving and living with chronic illness. But that's the system we find ourselves in today. Um, uh, th that's the environment we find ourselves in today, but the system is still essentially organized around the needs of children with acute intermittent illness. Um, and the way that transform it translates itself into system performance is that if you speak to families, uh, especially in California, they are challenged by trying to get their kids to reach their maximum health potential, uh, and particularly so in California. And, and I won't steal uh, uh, Christie's thunder, but um, uh, o over several years, our foundation has uh, asked Christie to look at national data and state data about how our system is performing. And uh, none of us as Californians are going to be proud of the way our system is performing. Um, and we think we can do better. Um, our foundation for the last several years has really been focused on what we can do to improve the system of care for kids in California. This is not the management of kids with any individual condition. Um, or kids in any individual community, but we're really looking globally at the system of care. Um, we've, I, I hope, taken a slow and methodical approach to this work, and our work is really predicated on this, and I'm not going to go over this with you, and let me tell you that this screen is small and all of these slides are in your packets. Um, but but this, this is a, from the industrial design point of view, a look at the way our system is organized today. 
when I look at it, I have these flashbacks to the Krebs cycle in biochemistry in medical school, and I get nightmares. <laughs> Um, but, um, you know, from any point of view, this is a system that's complicated and complex. And in essence, um, the care that children receive in this system is more dependent on who a child is, who their parents are, where they live, what their insurance is, than what they need. Um, and we think we can do better and create a more rational system that starts to look like this, where children get services based on what they need not who they are, where their insurance is, or where they live. So that's largely what our, uh, what, what our work is uh, as a foundation. And uh, we're, we're very pleased uh, that, the, um, uh, that Dr. Pan has taken time to organize this uh, briefing today to bring some of these issues uh, uh, forward. I want to make one other comment. We're here in the state capitol. Um, and this, the, the state of California, through its programs, has a set of responsibilities as a provider and payer of services for the children who are covered under state programs. But the majority of children who live in California with special health care needs are not covered by the state system. They're covered by the public system. And I want to remind legislators that they have a responsibility also to ensure the public health of the children who are in this private system. Um, and so although we're in Sacramento and there's operational responsibility on the part of the legislature for services provided to children that the state is covering, we also have a responsibility to make sure that all children, including those who are covered by private insurance, receive the care that they need. Um, so with that, we're going to have a sort of self-moderating uh, panel here today. We're not going to do introductions. Everybody's biographies are in your packet. Um, and uh, the only thing I will say is that when Dr. Pan arrives, we're going to take a brief pause and allow him to welcome everybody. Great. So with that, I'll turn this over to Christy.